is Rebecca Schissel Marshall with Whole Body Upgrade, a podcast to help you get unstuck, feel better, and have more energy. Let's get started. Welcome, welcome to Whole Body Upgrade. I am Rebecca Schissel Marshall, and we'll begin by welcoming in the directions. I welcome in the great direction of the east in the south, in the west, in the north, and I welcome in the direction that is above and below and the direction that is within. I welcome in all the loving and compassionate spirits that are here with us today and also our ancestors who have lived well and died well and are here to support us. And I recognize that I'm on the land of the creek in the Cherokee in what is now known as Athens, Georgia. Hello, hello, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. I really love recording this podcast. It's actually quite fun for me. It feels like I get to sit across the table and chat with you about life and about how to make life better. So I want to remind you of two things that are coming up, two other things that I am really in love with. I am one of the guests on the self-trust summit that is happening this month. It's happening May 24th and it starts really soon then today, but when you hear this, it will be like the 11th or the 12th and registration is open now. So it's a free summit. You can register for it and listen to all these amazing experts. There are like over 15 experts on self-trust and uh, I just can't wait. So exciting. I also want to remind you of A Place to Rest community is open and we are still accepting people. We want to keep it small. Uh, So right now is a good time to join while it is small and you get personalized attention. Uh, I'll be offering another energetic resting session, which is basically an energetic clearing and healing with downloads from the guides. And that's this Friday, May 13th. So if you join when you listen to this, um, you can join right in. You'll have all the access to all the previous recorded rest sessions. And um, if you join before Friday, you can join us on Friday in that energy session. It's super fun. It is very relaxing. It's um, all channel the guides, you'll, will clear energy. It basically balances your nervous system, which is amazing. We all need this because, oh my gosh, everything that is going on around us, the more we can balance our nervous system, the more we can do good in the world. So, um, it's amazing. I love it. And by the way, the women in the community are amazing. I love them so much. And they have left the sessions on Friday saying they feel deeply at peace and relaxed and joyful. And one even said that one session is like four hours of sleep. (laughs) So I think sleep is really important. But if you need a little extra, this is the place to be. And it's such a deal right now. As I'm starting this, it's only $54 a month and you get four of these calls, plus every week I put in new resources to help you with rest. So I just don't know anywhere else that you can get this kind of a deal for (laughs) this much work. It's powerful. So join us. Uh, We can't really waste any more time because the times we're in really call for deep grounding and deep clearing too lots of healing. So that brings me to what I want to talk about this week. Part of what I've been noticing for myself is, you know, of course, we are in very different times than it's been in the last 40 years. They're very turbulent times and my brain has a lot to say about it. (laughs) My brain has lots of stories going on. There is a lot going on and it's really challenging to keep up with all of these big things that are happening in today's world. My brain particularly likes to focus on how I won't be able to handle all of these difficulties, that the story is a lot of not good enough and insufficiency 
And that is really a thick part of my past. So I'm bringing a lot of awareness to what stories are being told about not being good enough, about not having enough, about being insufficient. And this was brought to my attention. I was reading the book, um, The Soul of Money by Lynn Twist, which I highly recommend. And it helped me to really see this pattern of insufficiency and not enoughness. I mean, I already knew, I already kind of knew, but in a different way of looking at how the critical voice in my head can talk about this not enoughness, this insufficiency. So as I mentioned, I'm told that I'm not enough and that I don't have enough. That's by this voice in the head. If you're watching the video, if you don't know, this is also on YouTube, that there's um, this little voice in my head that goes, right, 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 right. And in fact, everyone has this voice. And the voice says, I'm not enough. I don't have enough. Uh, I need to work harder. I need to do more in order to prove that I am enough. And in my experience, what I see a lot of is that this is why people, and especially women, right? Like just pause there. This voice in our head leads us to do more and to work harder, especially women. And this is why it's so challenging. It's so difficult for women and people of color, any marginalized group, right? To give themselves the rest that they need. So just take a breath, right? We need rest. And I don't know anyone who walks around. Well, I know a few people (laughs) who are doing this work too walk around saying they feel rested. Most of the people that I know don't feel that way. They feel exhausted. So I see this pattern with my clients too. There is this critical voice in the head. And this critical voice, right, this is deeply hurtful. And it has so much power right? That critical voice is the one that it has been conditioned in us from the time we were young, conditioned by family, conditioned by teachers, conditioned by society, right? Advertising what we should and shouldn't do. The voice tells us that we should, right? Putting in quotes, should know better. It also tells us that we have to keep doing right? Keep doing things. You got to keep active. And that if we were actually better or good enough, that things wouldn't be this way, right? If only you really knew how to, right? This is all the proof, right? Again, in quotes, that we need to keep really working hard in whatever way that looks like for you, right? Really could be working hard and not resting for yourself. It could be taking care of your family. It could be whatever it is you do on whatever, however you make your income and your job. It could be making the house look a certain way, right? That could be the work. That critical voice is very loud. And it tends to offer kind of the same um, insight or the same (laughs) shoulds over and over again. So here's what I've noticed about that is that this critical voice, it not only keeps us constantly doing, right, to prove our worth, which keeps us from resting, but also having those stories, having that critical voice also sucks the energy right out of you, right? So the conversation that we have with that critical voice is the energy suck. So it's not only that we're losing energy by overly working, overly doing, people pleasing, right? Perfectionism. But we also lose that energy from just listening to that voice, from just paying attention to that voice. So if we were doing without 
listening to the voice, right? Without listening to that voice, we probably, and in my experience, would not feel nearly as exhausted and drained. The critical voice in the head creates this sticky kind of feeling energetically. So you can feel it too. Take a moment right now. If you're driving, maybe don't close your eyes, but if you can pause, tune into what that critical voice has been saying for you, right? That, oh, if only you would have done that better. If you could just find the right outfit, if you could just find the right mate, well, it's too bad that you're too, right? That's kind of what it is. Maybe it's just saying you're not enough or you don't have enough love or money or time. Notice how that sentence, that conversation feels in your body. Where do you feel it? Does it feel heavy? Does it feel light? While that critical voice is there in the head, right? It's a a story that our brain makes up. It really makes a huge difference in how we feel in our body. When we can see, when we get that perspective, right? This observer perspective, the watcher perspective, when we see that voice is speaking to us and you can observe how your body may feel heavy, or your emotions change, or you may feel kind of like everything is draining out of you. Then we feel even more exhausted, right? There's the the energy from all the doing, and then there's the energy that this voice is draining. So that conditioned voice keeps telling us to keep doing to prove our worth. And in that telling, it's like having someone shouting at us. (laughs) on the sideline, which is also draining, right? So our energy is being drained twice as much. So personally, I like to think of this critical voice as actually separate. It is not us, right? It is separate from me. The way that I've been thinking about it lately is it's like the patriarchy has rented a room in your home and it's constantly judging your choices. You know, what are you wearing? Your clothing choices, what you say, how much you're resting. Are you lazy? Are you on the couch? Like, I can't believe that. Are you going to eat that? It's constant. Now, in Buddhism, the phrase that we talk about is um, that it's referred to as ego or in the practice that Sherry Huber um, has the Zen monastery peace practice, it's referred to as egocentric karma conditioning self-hate, which is a mouthful. But that's the, it's the, all of the karma, it's all of the things that we've conditioned, and it's this critical voice that we all have. So that's pretty challenging, right? <laughs> that's all like, great, Rebecca, thanks for that uplifting chat. Well, Here's the good news. This is the good news about it is that there is that voice and, right, there's this and that goes with it. You can actually learn to turn your attention away from that critical voice in the head. You can learn to turn your attention to something totally different that is compassionate, goodness, and loving, right? The other piece of that good news is that we have in our head, so we can turn our attention away, and we have our ability, also this incredibly loving and supportive voice, right? That that is possible as well. In some Christian religions, I've heard it referred to as the still small voice within, right? You can call it God, you can call it your inner wisdom, you can call it spirit, right? All of those different things is all my experience is all very similar. So is that when you turn your attention to that compassionate, loving voice, it's the voice that says, yeah, it is okay to rest. It is okay 
to take time off. It kindly encourages you to take care of yourself with as much love and attention as possible. My experience is it does take practice to turn your attention towards this voice and to listen to this voice. And it's 100% worth it. 100% worth practicing, noticing that critical voice like, oh, that's not the voice I want to listen to. And turning your attention towards the one you do want to listen to, the one that says, I've got you, right? I'm here with you. It's okay. We're going to make it through. I see you trying really hard, right? That loving voice. The other piece of good news is that compassionate, loving voice is also extremely powerful. So in the same way that the critical voice is extremely powerful, this opposite voice, this compassionate voice is extremely powerful. And in my experience and experience of my clients, it is literally life-changing, life-changing, because then you have this voice there that you've develop this relationship that says, oh, sweetie, I know that was so hard. I know you're feeling sad. How can I take care of you today? Right? I know you've been standing and your feet hurt. How can we take a one minute break to rest your feet? What about putting your legs up the wall? What about soaking your feet tonight? Right? Kindness, much, much kindness. When you focus on that voice of, of love and compassion and kindness, You give the power and the energy to something that actually provides the energy back to you. So instead of a feedback loop of negativity that was happening over there with the the critical voice, it's a positive feedback loop, right? So you give the power and the energy to something that provides the energy back to you instead of it being siphoned off and away from you. And the bonus is because it is a kind, compassionate, loving voice, it's going to encourage you to do all those wonderful other good things like rest and fuel yourself with nutritious food and move your body and listening to uplifting podcasts, right? It's a powerful cycle for good. So the mind can really be very powerful and we can decide which power we want to give to it, right? Which one we want to give power to, the critical voice in the head or this loving, compassionate voice. Okay, friends, I would love to hear what you notice about that powerful voice in your head. And again, if you would like support, I would love to have you join A Place for Rest. And our next session is Friday. Right now the sessions are on Friday and I'll post the links Um, to both the Self-Trust Summit and the A Place to Rest in the show notes. Okay, dear ones, take good care of yourself. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Whole Body Upgrade. If you'd like to learn more about working with me, you can visit me on Facebook or Instagram or on my website, centeredyou, that's centeredyou.com. See you on the next episode of Whole Body Upgrade.